Bonjour, I'm Catherine Lefebvre, the ONAP TSC Chair. As the industry moves to the native cloud, the purpose of today's panel is to share how we can bring together the best of the two worlds, ONAP and cloud native. Six members of our ONAP CNF Task Force will be presenting our ONAP added value proposition. I'm pleased to welcome Srini Adepali from Intel, Thibaut Perala from Nokia, Ala Goldner from Amdox, Reni Heibi from Samsung, Fred Oliveira from Verizon, and Seshu Kumar from Huawei. Over the past years, most of the carriers kept investing in their private clouds. They are now considering the migration of some of their network-related workloads to third-party clouds. With the technology evolving, 5G, AI, there is a need to host applications, data, and devices differently. The management of this hybrid environment, private and public, raise complex challenges like latency and bandwidth requirement, location and privacy concern, including security, resiliency perspective, and more. In order to address these constraints, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has defined a reference architecture in which we believe ONAP has a role to play. Considering this new multi-cloud and containerized environment, Shrini, what will be the cornerstone of our Cloud Native implementation? Okay, thank you, Catherine. Um, yeah, it is the best in my view described by um, by giving two examples. Um, so, what do you need service orchestration, right? So, let's take uh, let's take the five G use case. Uh, many operators have a large number of edge locations at various places. Like you have uh, tens of thousands of uh, edges uh, at the cell tower or near to the cell tower, and uh, maybe thousands uh, central office uh, data centers, maybe hundreds of local data centers, a few regional data centers, and of course. People like to use even public clouds, uh, even for some of the control plane or the analytics applications. And even in, 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 with respect to those data centers, if you take 5G uh, RAN use case, for example, it's like becoming disaggregated. Like you have uh, 5G RAN um, you know, components such as DU, which may need to be deployed across uh, multiple cell tower edges. And uh, CUUP, CUCP may need to be deployed across multiple central office data centers and uh, even if you take 5g core some control plane functions like amf smf and uh, user uh, user plane function may need to be deployed in the local data centers as you see in the picture and uh, on top of it um, you know the telcos uh, want to go beyond uh, just deploying uh, network functions but also their customer applications for new business opportunities all these things for example need to happen in one single click right uh, one should be able to deploy these things in one click and also not only deploying, but also day to operations. Let's say there is a new image upgrade right on the DU. So one should be able to upgrade the tens of thousands of DUs in again with one click. So the problem statement really is there are a large number of sites and the computing is basically distributed across multiple sites. And then you would have customer applications. And you could have multiple customers, hence the multi tenancy is very important. And you also need, uh, one should be able to deploy not only CNFs, which is of course becoming very popular for 5G, but there would be legacy applications with the VNFs uh, also need to be supported. In addition to CNFs, VNFs, one should uh, be able to deploy, as we discussed just now, uh, able to deploy normal applications, enterprise applications in the same Kubernetes clusters, for example. So. Again, we are saying that uh, Kubernetes is becoming a choice of workload orchestrator for new 5G deployments. And hence, uh, any service orchestrator expected to support uh, uh, Kubernetes-based sites in addition to whatever sites they have, such, such as OpenStack. So as, as we see it here, this uh, multi-edge cloud computing scale is uh, similar, even higher to hyperscale um, uh, you know, automation. So hence, we believe uh, telcos, even enterprises, uh, managed service providers need at scale orchestration autom automation solutions. Hence, service orchestration is very important. Thank you.
Thank you, Skinny. So, Timo, ONAP is successfully established as a de facto industry standard for NFV SDN automation, providing a comprehensive platform for real-time policy-driven orchestration and automation of physical and virtual network function. What will be its role in the context of CNF? Thanks, Catherine, for the question. Um, I, I believe everybody in this panel has has heard comments like, what is the role of ONAP with CNFs, and is there really a need for ONAP in the era of, of cloud natives? Uh, I believe we all have come across those questions. So I think while it's true, ONAP may not look exactly the same as uh, for CNFs as it is for, for the VNFs, virtual network functions, we do strongly believe there is a definite role for ONAP still. So first of all, it is highly likely that the VNFs continue to exist still for some time, some time to come, and they need to be managed and orchestrated. Second of all, PNFs or physical network functions, for sure, they will continue to exist in telco networks. And it goes without saying that management and orchestration of those PNFs continues to exist. So, uh, for example, radio network equipment, equipment in, in mobile networks. So, considering all that, we anticipate that ONAP needs to be capable of managing orchestration and, and uh, automation in a hybrid environment with all kinds of workloads, be they CNFs, VNFs, or PNFs. In addition to that, then ONAP keeps an end-to-end -end service view of, of the system. And this is where we see ONAP bringing under undeniable value. So orchestration, orchestrating the services end-to-end. -end. And uh, those services may be composed of, uh, of the different kinds of workloads that I just mentioned. So this will be, this will be the great value that ONAP, ONAP will bring with it also in the, in the era of, of cloud natives. So with that, uh, back to you, Catherine. Thank you, Timo. So we understand from you the added value of ONAP with this service orchestrator. Ala, what are the other values that ONAP can bring for cloud native? So first of all, uh, the most important thing that ONAP is bringing to the cloud natives is that, and in general to the whole network functions world, which includes physical, virtual, and cloud native function, is that it looks on the whole service thing, not just to specific network functions and their types handled by their specific management system, but in general, the whole service, the service SLAs to maintain and the service characteristics to maintain, to orchestrate the service, to view the service from the inventory and to design the service. And I think this is the key difference and the key principle of the network management system that we are supporting in ONAP. So going to some specific, getting into some specific details of what exactly uh, the thing that I've just said means, it of course uses microservices architecture as use cloud native principles by also supporting, you know, multi-cloud and the availability to run over any types of cloud. It manages network service and application lifecycle management across multiple wins within that multi-win, multi-cloud whether it is open, stack, Kubernetes, Azure, any vendor specific wins, whatever needs to be supported is supported, even if there are several working for the same services uh, uh, under different domains. This is something that ONOP support. Now, speaking of design, ONOP design tools support multiple descriptors, Helm, Tosca, Hit, whatever is needed is supported by ONOP. Some came along with ONOP creation and establishment in uh, Linux Foundation networking. The other were added as we uh, uh, continued with our work to enhance ONOP. ONOP OOF, which is the optimization for tool 
for placement and homing, for choosing the right location to place workloads, extremely important for 5G. For, for many uh, use cases to support low latency application, you need some core network functions for system to put close to the user. So this is what that tool does. And this is something that cloud native by itself looking into the cloud native world only do not provide here. The overview is for the service and how service should be running. DCE, of course, collects telemetry from remote site, analyzes them, generate any control loop action, whether it is scale, heal, on the service level. Uh, and this is also what is supported in ONAP. Of course, support of standard models and APIs by Etsy, by TMF, by MEF, by 3GPP, you know, some examples may include 5G network slicing support where all the development for end-to-end -end network slicing is based on 3GPP, Etsy, and FV, and actually Etsy are the same specifications. Additionally, ONAP, of course, enables the to con configuration of network functional via RESTful APIs, NETCOM, Kubernetes, CRDs, whatever is needed. And again, there is a variety, which is not just limited to one method. And in order to view in the real time, you know, the whole service and how uh, its resources function right now, the AI, uh, ONAP AI is the central repository, not just for specific cluster, but really the central repository that keeps site, network element inventory, and network service status. So I guess, again, to summarize and to highlight what I said, ONAP really is the service level, end-to-end -end network management platform solution, uh, going across different domains, uh, different whims. Uh, when I say domain, trend, transfer, core, uh, everything different, type of transport, uh, along different whims, different cloud, public, private, specific types of cloud, and combining all those into the single end-to-end -end network service. Thank you, Ala. Rani, how does ONAP fit in the CNF landscape? Thanks, Catherine. Uh, so the shift towards the cloud native architecture in telecom is a coordinated effort between several communities and organizations. There are four pillars to this transition, and ONAP has an important role to play here. While this landscape may seem confusing at first glance, it is actually a well-orchestrated endeavor. Each community provides its deliverables, and there is little to no overlap. The first step in building modern network functions is defining the architecture for both the cloud infrastructure and the network function itself. Several groups within the Linux Foundation Networking and the CNCF are working to on defining the requirements for such architecture, as well as SDOs like Etsy and the GSMA. ONAP has an updated set of network function requirement to cover mixed workloads of PNFs, VNFs, and CNFs. The requirements ensure that the network function can be a part of an end-to-end -end service managed by ONAP. ONAP requirements complement those provided by CNTT, CNCF, TUG, and ensure smooth orchestration experience. In the implementation phase, ONAP provides end-to-end -end orchestration for cloud-native network functions. It enables building network services that are cloud-native and may also include virtual or even physical components. To make sure everything plays nicely together, tools for testing and validating the cloud-native services are being developed. The ONAP community is working on the evolution of its VTP, the VNF testing platform, to CNTP to support cloud-native network functions. CNTP may be used as part of the badging program and is closely aligned with the LFN Compliance Validation and Certification, or CVC, program. The result is going to be a coherent set of requirements and tools for implementation, making it easier for both operators and vendors to smoothly transition to cloud-native architecture. Back to you, Catherine. Thank you, Honey. Fred, can you tell us a little bit more about how ONAP implementing Etsy specification? Thank you, Catherine. Uh, this is Fred Oliver. I'm a uh, fellow at uh, Verizon and are working with uh, ONAP to uh, enable some uh, 
uh, alignment with the Etsy specifications to uh, allow uh, uh, orchestration and automation using some of the uh, uh, Etsy methodology. Uh, in order to uh, uh, leverage this, we're using several uh, specifications from uh, Etsy, uh, including the ones listed on the screen here, uh, SOL 4 for uh, VNF and PF packages, uh, SOL 7 for uh, NS package, uh, and various interface specifications, SOL 1, SOL 3, and SOL 5. Uh, in the way we've uh, integrated these things is uh, we have uh, our SDC component, which onboards uh, packages, and we've enabled uh, SOL4 onboarding. Uh, and design of the, uh, these VNFs uh, into uh, uh, network services for uh, Etsy-based network services. Uh, that can then be uh, le leveraged by ONAP to deploy services uh, and uh, uh, work with an external or internal uh, NFEO to deploy uh, network services and the VNFs associated with that. Uh, we've also built in several adapters uh, to uh, enable uh, communication with uh, external VNF managers. Uh, SOL3 adapter uh, uh, is a way to uh, interface with external VNF managers and the SOL5 adapter uh, will allow connection to uh, the SOL5-enabled uh, uh, NFEO. Uh, and then we also have uh, some SOL2 connection to the uh, an EM environment for uh, to have uh, ONAP act as an EM. Uh, Etsy is pursuing a definition of uh, the container-based network uh, functions, uh, and we're working with them to uh, enable these specifications in ONAP. Uh, these are currently in uh, stage two specifications, IFA 11 in particular, uh, to describe the uh, containers and operations. Uh, and we intend to uh, leverage these uh, capabilities to um, uh, deploy, onboard, and uh, design and deploy uh, container-based network functions uh, into using ONAP uh, into a, an Etsy-based environment. Uh, and thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Fred. And finally, Seshu, can you give us an overview of where we are with our own upload native journey? Thanks for the question, Catherine. Uh, long, long story short, uh, the primary motive of uh, the, I mean, the primary motive of this entire objective is to have this in, in picture, as I, as you show in picture, that we need to have the complete orchestration and the management of all the resources that includes the PNFs, the VNFs, and the CNFs to be done by the ONAP, uh, that being the central repository. So the primary motive is to have this possible as a stepping stone towards the cloud native journey. So what we have done so far is that we have taken the initiative of uh, having the cloud native, uh, 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 the, the CNF support in Casablanca of ONAP, and the actual work started as a POC, the proof of concept from uh, guys from Intel and other, uh, driven mainly from Intel guys, but also other people have joined the, the main task force here, where in the case uh, VNFM was introduced in the multi-cloud. The intention there was to actually have uh, the existing APIs around the VNFs and PNFs to be supported uh, and also to leverage the CNF uh, orchestration and the management with, with, with respect to that. So this flows, as you see in the diagram, are depicting different uh, tasks which are involved in that. It's pretty huge task complex. I mean, uh, the the initial diagram may actually overwhelm someone who, who doesn't have their deep understanding of an app. But as you can see, there are multiple issues which have been solved in this as we tend to move ahead. So from there, uh, what we have is this thing, which is what um, is current work which is actually happening. So in a nutshell, the previous work actually had a Helm chart which was defining the complete CNFs model and also uh, packaged in the heat package so that was what we were we were trying to solve in the current uh, work so the current work is more like give a helm helm chart a first class region uh, citizenship during the day zero and day one operations we are talking about both the onboarding the design as well as instantiation work with here so new resource step is being introduced during this season time uh, that new resource will be uh, known to the both onboarding as well as instantiation work of it that way we will keep uh, Helm chart or Helm based uh, orchestration of the CNFs or the management of CNFs possible and we can actually take it to the other steps of it. 
So this is a one time, I mean, this, this uh, uh, flow which we try to have here is actually, apart from the various th things, we also have delegation mode here with respect to uh, the other modes. Like, for example, we are also uh, taking up the previous, as, as Rani rightly said, uh, we are actually talking about ETSI-based KDS uh, orchestration also, but external VNFM, which is a brownfield scenario. So such things are also being considered. The other key enhancements around this helm uh, are around the helm enrichment through profiling, where user profile will be given, and that will be uh, considered for the orchestration perspective and all. So this is, uh, in nutshell, I can say, the major work which is currently being considered. And what is there for future? The future is actually what we will require to have the complete end-to-end uh, -end orchestration perspective of this, wherein the day-to operations, like what Allah was saying sometime before, the scaling, the healing perspective should also be included. Uh, we also intend to have uh, the integration, which Rani uh, just spoke about, and also Fred, uh, coming from different SDOs, as well as open source systems, like the XGVLA, the CNTT, the CVC, uh, then on the, on the SEO side, we have the 3GPP, we have GSMA, of course, ETSI. So these are all things which are being considered from the perspective of holistic involvement of ONAP and orchestration of this and management of this with respect to other entities which are working around CNF. So uh, the other main intention here is also to take into consideration the intent-driven orchestration, uh, which is also being worked as we try to do right now. But the integration with that, with the main flow, is also something which we want to consider in future. So with that, Catherine, uh, back to you. Thank you, Seishu. I also want to thank all the speakers and the ONAP CNF Task Force for this panel. I hope that the audience now understands that ONAP acts as a central network service orchestrator, addressing lifecycle management of network function-based services. ONAP already deployed and managed VNF and PNF workloads across multiple sites and is now evolving to manage future services that will include additional, additional CNF capabilities and CNF component. Thank you so much to everybody. And then we open the floor for any additional question. Looks like there is a question. The question is, uh, what is the difference between uh, PNFs, VNF versus CNF in terms of data operations? I'll give my view. Uh, <clears throat> from the from the VNF, CNF perspective, from the deployment perspective, I, I would imagine there won't be much difference. From the data operations perspective, many times CNFs are deployed. Um, you know, the, the intention of CNFs in general is that the configuration uh, uh, need to be up, the configuration get applied to the CNF even when they get restarted by Kubernetes itself, right? You normally with VNFs in traditional environment, when the VNF gets restarted or PNF gets restarted, somebody has to push the configuration again, right? Maybe via NetConf, or maybe sometimes things get stored locally and they get uh, at, um, they, they, they get basically uh, reconfigured, then it comes back up. But in the Kubernetes environment, uh, having uh, shared storage is uh, may not be uh, should not be assumed. But in those cases, uh, the traditional method in uh, CNFs is to 
um, you know, uh, get hold of configuration via custom resources in Kubernetes, which gets stored in HCD. So whether CNF gets scaled out or whether CNF gets restarted or moved to some other node, you know, things would uh, suddenly work fine. So yeah, that's one difference I can think of. Like uh, in CNF, uh, people normally expose configuration via custom uh, Kubernetes custom resources, whereas in BNFs and uh, PNFs, typically it would be netconf, typically. So yeah, that's one difference I can think of. Thank you. I think we have also another question uh, from the Q&A with speaker. Will ONAP support different Kubernetes operator framework like Kudo or the Red Hat the operator framework to support more complex management of CNF? When, then what M can support? Yeah, I can take that. <clears throat> Um, um, so uh, Kubernetes operators, nothing but a CRV kind of a controller framework. Um, so the, the purpose of operators uh, typically is to simplify the deployment of a given application or network, uh, network function, especially when the deployment involves uh, multiple things to be done together. Uh, people tend to go with uh, operators. But even the operator at the end of the day, is initiated using some some custom resource, the Kubernetes resource, right? That resource itself need to be kind of a deployed from central place. So that's where one app comes into picture. So whether it is the operator, whether it is a set of discrete uh, uh, Kubernetes resources that need to be deployed in a workflow fashion, that is the job of uh, one app and service orchestrator. Yes. So the answer is that uh, yeah, uh, any service orchestrator like one app shall support uh, um, purely Helm chart based uh, uh, deployments, also deployment using uh, Kubernetes, operate, co uh, Kubernetes operators with uh, some custom resources. Thank you. I think we have also another question on the chat room. Do you plan to include XCMEC multi access edge orchestration functionality to ONAP? So I think we we lost Fred, but maybe Seshu with the orchestrator. Can you take this question? Maybe I can take it up by, <clears throat> I mean, Thank you, Shini. To us, yeah, to me, in my mind, yeah, at least, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we, we are not thinking about HC Mac, but based on my understanding, uh, the own app uh, with the Kubernetes plugin uh, becomes a, um, a Mac orchestrator. Uh, I believe that it is, uh, it has enough functionality to call it itself as a Mac -O. Uh, make orchestrator, but but there may be some additional things we may need to do that needs to be planned. But uh, most of the, I mean, I would imagine that 90% of the make orchestrator functionality um, uh, would become part of one app eventually. The only thing, uh, one thing which we're addressing at this time is the uh, we we have we don't have it yet, but we are we are actively talking about is called uh, traffic steering. 
right? That's one of the functionality uh, which um, uh, uh, Mac requires. That is, if a, if a cloud application is replicated in edges and, uh, and the traffic is going through that edge, we want the traffic to be, even though traffic is destined to the cloud application instance, if the copy is locally available in the edge, we really want it, that to be, and the traffic to be steered to that local application. So that aspect of it, we are seriously uh, considering at this time. Okay, thank you. Can you see me? Um, I think we have also uh, another question. Uh, I don't know if we can still answer. Today the RAN, um, today the RAN is, ecosystem is containing PFS and VNF like DU, CU. Any plan to introduce CNF for RAN in the future? So I will give a quick response. Um, ONAP and ORAN SP are tightly coupled. If you look at the service management orchestrator, you will see that uh, the ORAN SC rely a lot on the ONAP uh, architecture. Um, mainly the, the most component of ONAP are part of the service management orchestrator. And therefore, there is a close relationship with the ORAN SC open source community to ensure that we have a defined hope map uh, that you are building together. So currently, uh, in previous release, we have um, integrated adapter like A1, but also O1. Uh, we are working on O2. And I guess when the ORAN SC community uh, will start to tackle this, we will continue the, the relationship and the partnership. So it's, it's a quick answer. Uh, and uh, we would like to invite you to the Slack channels uh, if you want to have more details because I'm not sure we have still a lot to left um, for today. Any other words from the panelists uh, before we go? No. So thank you so much for all of you for attending our session and hope to speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.